So this coral bleaching is, is again, uh, just a, um, a recoverable thing. The coral is perfectly happy at this stage. Uh, it's similar to you having a cold. Uh, so you'll be fine as long as nothing else comes in afterwards. And you can see here, this is a nice uh, slide to show uh, how the coral is exactly the same as far as the animal part is concerned. Uh, all the white part has just lost those symbiotic algae. So this, this bleaching is just the visual whitening of the coral, uh, just due to the loss of the, the pigment, which is largely down to uh, the zooxanthellae, and it allows you to see your calcium carbonate skeleton uh, fruit. So this uh, is similar to the, the schematic I showed you before. Uh, this is caused by anchor damage, but it illustrates nicely uh, that most of the coral itself is just the skeleton. Um, and then you get a different variation as far as bleaching is concerned. Uh, sometimes all parts of the coral can, uh, can bleach. Uh, you get variable portions of the community uh, may bleach. You get uh, different species, different clones of different susceptibilities. Uh, so there's a large uh, kind of exaggeration that acroporids are, are more susceptible uh, to bleaching and disease than things like the massive corals. However, you sometimes within an Acropora a species, such as Acropora muricata or Formosa as it was previously called, uh, you can find that uh, sometimes if you increase the temperature even up to 36 degrees, uh, that no percent of, the, of a specific colony uh, will be susceptible to bleaching. If you do the same with a completely different colony, you might lose 100% to bleaching and then they might subsequently die as well. So you get this wide variety uh, in the severity of, of the corals um, response to things like increasing temperatures. Um, there's also the argument about coral, uh, certain corals being uh, adaptive, uh, they can evolve. Um, we'll look into this about the future of coral reefs uh, right at the end. Um, in 1998, uh, I'm sure most of you would be aware uh, that places like the Seychelles and even uh, in the, the Maldives, uh, they suffered very highly. Uh, a lot of corals bleached and a lot of corals died out. Um, in the Maldives, uh, uh, up to about 90% um, of, of reefs were damaged in some way. Whilst over on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, uh, they were actually got about 3% of mortality down to this same phenomenon, uh, which occurred all over the world. Uh, so this is uh, just a, an idea to give you a difference um, in bleaching, and it can be based down on uh, crevices. Uh, sometimes those lo lower down um, are, are more tolerant. They, they can have different clades of cymbididium, uh, these zooxanthellae. Uh, so only part of the colony may bleach. It might depend on uh, the location they're facing, if they're facing west or east. Um, but as you can see up at the top, uh, the acroporids do seem to uh, be more susceptible. Or are they? Um, so what's happening as far as climate change is concerned? Well, we've already seen that in 1998 we had a big bleaching event in 2010. We also had another one. Um, and when the next one's going to occur, we don't know. Um, but we are in an El Nino year, uh, so maybe this year uh, might be a bit devastating. Uh, touch wood, hopefully, that it doesn't occur. But researchers like to, to have dramatic events because it means we can study more things, uh, but to a degree. We don't want to see the demise of reefs uh, too soon, or ever, really. Um, but as you can see, the predictions uh, look pretty grim. Predictions are always changing. Um, before, when I first started, uh, I was told that coral reefs as we know it uh, would be dead uh, within 2030. Uh, now that's been changed to another, uh, another 100 years, um, and it's likely in 100 years that prediction will be changed again. Um, there's, the simple answer is we don't really know how these ecosystems are going to be affected uh, too much. But the, the chances are something's going to change. We're already starting to see little bits of change. Um, but it's not going to be, uh, in my opinion, not going to be as dramatic um, as some of the predictions make it out to be. But there are clear trends. You can see this is not predictive data. This is real data. And you can see the global average near sea surface temperature from 1861 to 2004 has steadily increased, and this is still carrying on increasing up in the last 10 years as well. Um, and this link between climate and coral bleaching is pretty obvious. You can see uh, the line, the top line, uh, the bottom line is uh, the sea surface temperature, um, and the top line is number of corals which are starting to bleach. Um, and you can see a mass bleaching events in 1991, 95, 
um, and they were also in 98 as well. And if you look at uh, NOAA's uh, temperature records, uh, this was from 1998, uh, where that mass bleaching event occurred. And you can see what happens is that the increase in temperature hangs around for a lot longer than it normally would have done. And this is what caused the bleaching. If you look into where the Maldives is, uh, they're right in the hot spot, uh, which was why you guys had uh, such a devastating time uh, during that period. Um, and the SST uh, rose by about 2.1 degrees uh, above the average uh, from 1950 to 1999. Uh, so a, a dramatic increase. And, and corals always live right on the edge of their existence. It's really strange that an organism would choose to, to live so close to its threshold. Most organisms live quite uh, well below the, their tolerance threshold uh, for optimum survival, but corals seem to live right on the edge. So this was a reef restoration project uh, conducted uh, from one of my colleagues back, at, back in the UK, um, and he uh, was out here doing a, re a reef restoration study uh, in 1994, and you can see uh, the image here was an acroporid uh, planted onto one of the, the restoration uh, areas, um, and then in 98, uh, it increased a lot, it started growing, it was quite healthy, uh, but suddenly bleached, and then in July 98, uh, it was dead, and there was only parts of, of this whole restoration project uh, still in existence, unfortunately. And this uh, trend was, was seen all over the Maldives. Uh, these are two different uh, reef monitoring networks. You've got the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network and the Reef Check itself. Um, and you can see, so A, um, A and C are the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network, and B and D are the Reef Check. Um, and they go from uh, 40 to 45% uh, coral cover before 1998, and then this was dropped dramatically down to about 3 to 5%. But bleaching's uh, evolved around uh, alongside corals, so that doesn't explain uh, the complete drop. But uh, previously, before, uh, the, before 2000, uh, most people thought bleaching was the thing which was killing corals. So what is the major problem? Well, when you've got bleaching, uh, as we've already shown, uh, you, you get this reduction in its mucus layer. It's a reduction in its uh, natural defense against other pathogens. Um, it's nematocyst production. Again, another very uh, energy-consuming uh, thing to produce. Uh, it just can't uh, sustain that. So in bleaching, uh, these numbers uh, reduced as well. It's antimicrobial capability. It's ability, again, to defend itself uh, from uh, naturally invading pathogens is reduced as well. And the bacterial load goes against the trend um, and starts to increase. So it gets this mass buildup of uh, numerous different bacterial species um, in a bleached coral compared to a healthy organism. And what you start to see, uh, which is linked to temperature, so these are the controls where you've got a healthy uh, coral living quite happily, uh, apparently healthy in a, in a relatively stressed state. Um, but when you start to increase temperatures, up from the norm, up to 32.5. In this instance, this was a lab experiment. Uh, you start to see bleaching occurring uh, in this third column. Um, and then you get death, uh, which is caused uh, by particular diseases. But what you quite often get um, when bleaching goes, if this experiment was carried on, you'd start to see diseases uh, taking hold as well. Um, and these corals all become susceptible to diseases. This coral disease uh, research is, is relatively new field, um, but there's a lot of species out there, a lot of different types which are being described. Uh, but corals only have a finite way of showing themselves uh, that they're diseased, and these are the kind of main uh, areas. We're, we're very good with our names as coral disease specialists. Uh, does anybody know what this one would be called? No? No one's going to shout out? Come on, audience participation. Black band disease, yes, because there's a black band, you see, it's very cunning. What about this bottom one? Yellow? Yellow band, it's the same thing. Um, this one? Pardon? White band disease, yeah, you're getting the hang of this, wonderful. Um, and then up at the top, it's a bit of a tricky one. It's called white plague, it's very original, we changed the name there. 
Um, it's still classed as a, as a white syndrome. So white syndromes encompass things like uh, white band disease, white plague, um, white patch, uh, white spot, um, very, very originative names. Um, but what we start to argue is that they're probably all caused by the same sort of uh, microorganisms. Uh, whilst the other things are, are quite distinct, this one, yellow band disease, we'll have a look at what causes that. Uh, black band disease uh, is caused by a cyanobacteria, or thought to be caused by a cyanobacteria mass. Um, and in fact, if you actually put some marine putty over the band, you can actually cure the disease, um, which is quite interesting. But if you try and clean it off, uh, then the, the bacteria in concern can just move downstream and infect other corals. Um, so quite a lot of work's been conducted on that. Um, but yet, although uh, research has been conducted for a long time, we're still really in its infancy, and we don't really understand exactly what's going on with diseases. Um, and that's why uh, I got involved in this um, and carry on uh, doing a lot of research.